What's up? This is Ray. Welcome back. Hey, we got a kind of a, a psychedelic analog episode for you today. We're going to be looking at this particular film. This is Lomochrome Purple by Lomography. And I got to be honest, when I first saw this film, I didn't take it serious. A lot of people don't take it serious. But I had a discount coupon for Lomography's website and I decided to buy a, a combo pack of different films to test them out and, and see what they are. And, th and this was in the pack. So um, I got it, got the one roll, 36 exposure, and I shot it. And I have to say, um, it was interesting. Um, I'm going to show you what I got. And um, if you're interested in this particular film, I'm going to try to uh, show you the best way to get the most out of it and um, how to use it to the best of its ability. So uh, stick around. Okay, so what's the deal with Lomo Chrome Purple? What's the history? Well, years ago, I think in the 60s and 70s, Kodak made a film called Aerochrome. It was a infrared film. What was beautiful about that film is it, it rendered green vegetation, this reddish purple look, um, but it kind of left everything else pretty much as it was. And it was real unique and beautiful, but that film has been discontinued. Unfortunately, I guess not enough people were buying it. Um, so what Lomography did is they kind of have a play of on words. This purple film renders everything green purple, not just green vegetation. So it's, it's not as isolated as the, um, infrared film was, but, um, so anyway, you're going to see for yourself <laughs> whether you like it or not, but, um, yeah, that's the history of this film. Uh, it's a, they say you can shoot it between one and 400 ISO, but what I notice in my history of testing Lomography films is when I, when they say that, it means it's usually a 400 speed film that you can overexpose two stops if you want. Um, but when I overexpose a lot of their films, it, it, it doesn't look good to my eye. So I shot this at 400 ISO. Um, so yeah, let's look at some of the images I got and um, let's see what you think. All right. So look at this first image of my daughter at, um, at this park. Uh, you can see how the, her skin tone is not normal. It, it, her skin tone has a little purple to it, the same as the, the leaves and the, and the grass. So it's not necessarily isolating it the way uh, the, the aerochrome would, but it is unique. Um, one thing I like is you'll see in these images, the sky is not a really a blue color. It's kind of like a, it's like a tealish. I can't explain it, but, um, yeah. And you're going to notice also the exposure on this was pretty pretty perfect. So I'm glad I did shoot it at 400 ISO. Okay, so so an image I want to show you is check this one out. It, it's pretty pretty a perfect example of what this film looks like. This is an image of me in my backyard. Look at the mango tree. You see how it has that deep purple, dark. Um, my skin is a little purple. It's not normal skin tone, but it's not terribly off either. One thing I notice about this film is it it doesn't. It doesn't throw off the skin tones as bad as you might think it would. But um, also looking in the shadowy areas, you can see though that it is, it's holding some of the detail, but not, you can't see what color the grass is. It's neither green or purple down there, not necessarily. And finally, look at the stop sign. You notice how the red is pretty much red. That's one thing I noticed about this film. Reds don't really change. It skews a bunch of other stuff. Um, but reds and whites are pretty much neutral. So yeah, that's interesting. This is probably one of my favorite shots from the road. Okay. So check out this fire truck, man. It looks like a dream. It looks like you're on Mars, doesn't it? I like the color of the sky. It's, it's nice and soft. The grass is, is purple, but the red, again, the red is, is pretty much staying red. Um, very interesting. When I saw this truck, I had to pull over 
and uh, take a shot to see what it would do. I only have one roll of this to test, so um, try to try it in different scenarios. Next, let's look at this image of another image of me at this nature center. Man, so it shows how sometimes you, it can throw, I don't know, and again, I'm, I'm not Caucasian. I'm curious how this will affect Caucasian skin. <laughs> yeah, but my skin here is kind of purplish too, but that's to be expected. This image almost looks like it only has two colors, light blue and purple. There's not a whole lot of other in between. So that's something to keep in mind when you're shooting this film. It's good to, if you want, to have some other colors in there, maybe some reds and yellows and other stuff um, to give some variety, um, to break it up a little bit. But yeah, um, I did shoot a few images to see what my skin tone would look like on here. Okay, so this is another image I really like. Um, this is my daughter on a boat dock and look at the white of her pants and the white of the dragon. What we see is when they, when they made this film, they calibrated whites to be like a, the neutral point and everything else revolves around it. That's kind of what I like about it. And because of that, most importantly, I noticed this is the only film that when I scanned it, I didn't have to do any color correction. I didn't really have to make no exposure changes. I've never seen that before. In the three years I've been shooting film, I've always had to do something. But um, they came out from the scanner looking exactly like this. And I can't explain it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so that's one thing to keep in mind though. If you're scanning it yourself, um, then again, how would you color correct it anyway? I guess you would st just stick with the white balance. If you are going to color correct this, um, uh, calibrate it towards something white in the photo and because otherwise you really won't know how you're supposed to do it, right? Okay, so look at this image of me. Um, you notice how my shirt is pretty much completely blown out. You can't see any detail in there. But um, the lower part of the image is good. That's one thing you can tell is it. Uh, that's kind of why I didn't want to shoot it at 100 or 200 ISO. I don't think it's too forgiving for overexposed areas. But um, yeah, I take a lot of self-portraits as you probably notice. <laughs> All right, so that's really my basic review of Lomo Chrome Purple. This is a unique film and a lot of people say um, it's just too strange for them. But one thing I noticed is this film is a lot of times it's out of stock. It's like in high demand. It's not cheap. So <laughs> enough people like it that they keep buying it. Um, and that's interesting. And I purposely bought it in 35 millimeter um, instead of medium format. So I'll have much options to choose. So, yeah, I hope this these images I took are a good example for you, what it can do. Uh, if you want to try it, um, I'm going to put a link below where you can get this, um, probably on the Lomography Amazon store. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know what you think of this. Or would you shoot this film? Um, is it like, no, it's not even like an Instagram. I don't think Instagram would, could, would pull this off. Could they? I don't know. Well, that's another story. But yeah, thanks for watching though. And keep in mind, no matter what you use for your creative photography, whether it's film or digital or anything like that. Until next time, as always. Keep it real.